Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how I polar align a Star Tracker slash equatorial mount in the Southern Hemisphere in the daytime. So without further ado, let's polar align this thing. So to start things off, we need to roughly level our tripod. As you can see, it is level enough for what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna whip out a magnetic compass here. And there is another factor that you need to consider when polar aligning or trying to point due south. And that is to do with magnetic declination. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'll pull up a site now so you can see what it is. So here in Goulburn slash Crookwell, it is off by 12 and a half degrees, which means I need to point east by 12 degrees and line it up with the flat part of the wedge here. So that's what I'm going to go and quickly do now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is find out what our latitude is. So here near Crookwell, it's about 34 degrees. So what I'm going to do is get a phone and, which has a tilt meter on it. I'm going to place it on the flat edge on the top of the equatorial mount and I'm going to make sure it says 34 degrees and then once nighttime hits we'll see if Sigma Octans is in the frame or not. Now obviously we need to find the South Celestial Pole. The first way is what I always use. Now I'm going to draw an imaginary line from Atria to Apis and then I'm going to keep drawing until I reach double the distance between Atria and Apis. And using Apis as an arrow I can point towards Sigma Octans by bending the line a little bit. And that should get you roughly aligned with the South Celestial Pole and therefore Sigma Octans will be in your poloscope. Now there are two other ways that you can do this in the winter time or when the pointers on Southern Cross are nice and high above the horizon. Draw a D shape from the Southern Cross and the pointers and where they interact with each other is roughly where the South Celestial Pole would be. Now the other way to align South is to just use the Southern Cross. So what I'm going to do is draw an imaginary line from Gamma Crucis, the top star of the Southern Cross, and the bottom star of the Southern Cross, which is Alpha Crucis. I'm going to keep drawing a line until I've reached four times the length of those two stars in the Southern Cross. And by stopping at four times the distance, we have arrived close to the South Celestial Pole. Now, if it's summer, you can use a star called Achenar and another star that's a little bit dimmer that's close to the small Magellanic Cloud. It's called Beta Hydri. Now, what we can do is use the same method we did with Atria and Apis. As you can see here, I have drawn a line from Achenar to Beta Hydri. I'm going to bend the line a little bit towards the bottom left, towards the South Celestial Pole. Now, this might take a bit of practice because it is a little bit harder to align with a bend in the line, so to speak. I guess once you've learnt that, on to the next step. As you can see in the poloscope, Sigma Octans is now there. Because it was daytime, we didn't quite get it exactly where it should be. So what we can do now is look through the poloscope and use the radical to center Sigma Octans into the little crosshairs. Since this is a star tracker, you don't have to be perfectly aligned because the most you're using is what? Like a hundred millimeters focal length. Okay, so another way you can check if you're polar aligned or not is you can go to live view, zoom in, to the middle of the screen and make sure the camera is pointing the same way that the star track is pointing exactly the same way and then what you could do there you can rotate the right ascension axis and you've got to make sure that sigma octans is rotating around the celestial pole now there is a star forward of sigma octans that is a lot closer to the pole and you can kind of align to that as you can see here it is pretty much dead center polar aligned 